It's uh, a little past 5.30 on, on April 10th, 2006. Uh, this is the meeting of the Ventura County Air Pollution Control District Hearing Board. Um, we have one item on the agenda tonight, and this uh, this is docket number 779, a uh, petition from uh, Dos Quadras Offshore Resources, LLC. Uh, before we start, uh, can the clerk please administer the oath? Please stand. Raise your right hand. You and each of you, do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give and the matters now pending before this board is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so be God? I do. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all the members of the board are, are present tonight. Uh, the district is, is represented uh, by Mr. Keith Duval and Ms. Chris Cody, uh, Mr. Oriano. The uh, counsel to the the board is is here as well. Could the representatives of pe the petitioners please introduce yourselves? Uh, my name is Alex Stein. I'm the regulatory coordinator, air compliance specialist for Decor LLC. I'm Mike Finch. I'm the director of environmental safety and regulatory compliance for Decor LLC. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Stein. How long have you approximately had that position with Decor? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I've been employed with DCOR since January 4th of 2005. Uh, prior to that, it's been with Chevron um, up in the Bay Area and here locally also in the in the uh, Ventura area. So your name is Find or Finch? Finch. Finch. How, how long have you had your position? Uh, Mr. Chair, I've been with the company since uh, September of 2001. Thank you. Uh, Usually at this time, we, we ask the petitioner to, uh, to present their case uh, to the board. If you're prepared to do that, I would like to go over it, have you go over it with us. Okay, I have, um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I have three handouts uh, I'd like to uh, um, give to you. And the first one is a, uh, is a basic schematic of uh, the uh, equipment we're talking about at the uh, Rincon oil and gas plant. Before we continue, there's, there's three items, um, a, a schematic, um, something from Electric, Electrical Solutions Corporation, and some some records from, from DCOR. Would you like these to be included in the record? Uh, that would be fine. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, um, as you know, um, we uh, operate the oil and gas facility at the Rincon, and um, this facility uh, accepts gas from uh, five offshore platforms and oil. Um, we use uh, five compressors up there to um, uh, boost the pressure from eight, uh, from five, from I'm sorry, from 50 to around 950 psi. Um, the three compressors that we use primarily are the electric compressors. Um, only one at a time is needed for this this process. Um, back approximately starting on uh, December 13, 2005, we began to have troubles with our uh, electric compressor number five and six switch gear. It's a it's a, a, a controller that um, controls these two compressors. They're linked together by one common controller. Um, and um, compressor number seven is is also available for our use on a separate controller. Uh, compressor number seven, unfortunately, was uh, being overhauled at the time. And um, I hope I gave you the right handouts. Um, do you have uh, a handout that says overhead uh, on compressor seven or overhauled? Did you? Did you bring the other ones that you printed out? No, that's yeah. overhauled. <laughs> and we actually have some other changes to that, and I think we, uh, we brought the wrong package. Actually, I think yeah, the, the one you redrew that you printed out, I think is still on your printer. Or do you have it? You have the only correct one. There. Yeah, this is the. OK. Oh, OK, except yeah. for that overhead means overhauled. I'm yeah. sorry. I'll proceed. Um, so on about 12, 12, 13.05, we began to have trouble with the switch gear on compressor number five and six. 
And that means that when, when one compressor started running uh, and shut down, the other compressor was supposed to start up and, uh, and take the gas from the plant and push it through the amine system and into the gas company's sales line. Um, because the switch gear is common to both of those units, um, it was causing compressor 5 and 6 both to go down. And since we couldn't use compressor 7, we didn't have any other compressors to run except the standby Cooper compressors to continue to put the gas in the sales gas line. So um, we began to have trouble on 12.13 and every day, 12.14, 12.15, all the way through uh, uh, 9.20 or 129.06, uh, we continued to accumulate hours and usage on the standby Cooper compressors, the IC driven compressors. Those compressors have fuel gas uh, usage limits um, that were on the 29th, um, I believe it was the 29th, they were, they were, we, we exceeded those limits. On the 30th, we uh, uh, I'm sorry, on the 28th we exceeded the limits, on the 29th we called in a breakdown, and on the 30th we uh, requested a district variance to, to be able to continue to use those compressors as our primary means of compressing gas in, and selling it to uh, SoCal. Um, we, we, uh, leading up to that point, we had uh, several electrical uh, contractor visits to, to try and troubleshoot that problem and uh, we, we finally fixed it and how we fixed it is uh, is explained on this electrical solutions corporation diagram um, we, we can talk about that if, if anyone would like to, to talk about more detail there and uh, and since we fixed it um, we've only used the compressor for uh, three three times on February 10th, 17th, and then uh, March 1st, uh, with very little runtime on it, and that's that's the way those compressors are supposed to be run. They they do not get used unless there's a uh, a fault in all three of the electric compressors, um, and um, and many many times during the year uh, there's no usage at all during during the month. So. Uh, the petition we're coming in for, the variance we're requesting, is that we continue to be able to use those uh, IC-driven compressors um, when we need to for, for power failures um, and any unusual circumstances that uh, cause the electric compressors to go down, all three of them, which is, which is very unlikely to occur uh, to any great extent. And um, until we get back into the... Um, the permitted limits for each of those internal, uh, those IC compressors, um, we, we will have to operate them in a variance mode or we won't be able to sell any of the gas to SoCal and we'd have to flare it instead. But if we flare it, we get into flaring limits that we would exceed fairly rapidly. Uh, at that point, we would have to come in for a variance to flare gas or uh, we'd have to shut down all the production from offshore, which would be oil and gas. Uh, currently, our daily uh, flaring uh, I'm sorry, our, our daily sales is approximately 6 million uh, standard cubic feet of gas per day. Uh, the, the revenue from that is about $50,000 per day. Uh, if we had to shut that in, if we had to shut the oil and get oil in also, it would be an additional $300,000 per day of lost revenue. So we feel like uh, we've, we've acted uh, diligently in, in attempting to fix the problem as soon as, uh, as, soon as it began to occur. Uh, and we have fixed it, um, and, and as you can see by the use, we have we have used the uh, IC compressors very little since since then. Um, do you have any questions? The, the uh, district staff has has prepared a, a, a draft document um, covering tonight's hearings and and proposing the. Uh, uh, the board's findings and and suggesting an order. Have you had a chance to look at that? Yes. Yeah. Yes, we have. Is there anything about it that you uh, have any issues with? No, I think, as a matter of fact, uh, Mr. Chair, we, we're we're start, we're complying with uh, portions of that order already um, in terms of recording the usage and uh, not using those internal those IC compressors uh, unless we absolutely have to. Okay. Thank you. Uh, do members of the board have? Have questions uh, for the petitioner? I have a question of the district. Mr. 
Well, uh, you said the ROSF is not a major stationary source as defined by the PPA criteria? That's, that's correct. State and county criteria? No, it or is. Uh, we only consider um, major sources pursuant to the EPA criteria, being 25 tons per year of NOx or ROC emissions, or um, 100 tons per year of carbon monoxide. So there are there are no state or local criteria for a major source. Any other members of the board have? Have questions for the petitioner, Mr. Gasparino? Yes, Mr. Chairman. I have a question for the petitioner, or maybe uh, Mr. Duvall can uh, add to this. Under the petitioner's shell, on page number seven, item number two, it says the LLC shall minimize all planned activities that would take the electric comp compressors out of service. I'd appreciate somebody explaining what that really means to me and how that would be minimized. Where, where is that again? That's on uh, page seven at the bottom, petitioner shell item number two, the last two two lines. If, if I can answer that, I would. Go ahead, Mr. Uh, appreciate that. Um, it, it was my intent in in having that phrase is to be kind of a catch-all that they wouldn't uh, uh, do any any scheduled maintenance on the electric compressors. Uh, they wouldn't do any scheduled maintenance that would cause, uh, uh, let's say on the platform, that would cause excess natural gas to be shipped to the facility that would require the use of the gas-fired compressors. Uh, any, any maintenance that can be deferred or uh, not uh, accelerated during this period of time. Those are the things that we're looking for. And I assume the petitioner understands that, correct? Okay, thank you very much. Mr. Chair, I have another question. Mr. Stubblefield. Sir, you said um, um, additionally the compressor C7 overhaul should also be complete by 10 February 2006. Is it? Um, uh, Yes, it was. It was completed, and it's fully operational now. It was completed on or before that day. And somewhere in here, I believe you said that C7 alone is capable of pumping all the gas to shore. Is that correct? Uh, these compressors are used to push the gas through the amine plant, uh, which removes the C CO from the um, CO2 from the gas, and then puts it into the sales gas line. And uh, compressor number seven by itself can. Um, can compress the gas into the sales gas line. Compressor number six by itself and compressor number five by itself can handle all the gas from the offshore platforms uh, to be processed through the amine plant into the SoCal gas line. So would it be correct to say that while f the, the the electronic controller circuit for uh, compressors five and six is being troubleshooted and repaired that seven can handle it? Right now, and uh, is that's correct. And uh, and also, I'd like to add that the um, common controller switchgear was repaired on the 30th of oh. January. Um, and so we uh, we can use all three of these compressors at any time now. They're all fully functional. Thank you. Other questions or comments by board members? I have a, a couple of questions um, for my clarification. On, on page two of, of the draft document, um, it uses the word in the, in the very first uh, paragraph about oil and gas production from the platform is, is shipped to the Rincon onshore facility. Is that literally correct? It comes by, by vessel? Uh, no, we, we use the term shipped sometime, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, to, uh, to, to uh, to explain that it's shipped by pipeline, okay. so all the all the all the oil is shipped uh, via pipeline to the uh, ROSF facility as well as the gas. Okay, thank thank you. Um, another question um, relating the the comparison, uh, your daily 
daily sales is, you said, something like 6 million cubic feet of gas. Uh, but, but the limitation on the, on the uh, gas-fired compressor engines is in terms of the fuel they use. Uh, do you, can you off the top of your head, either one of you, make any comparison about you know, how, how much that burning of that fuel compares with the 6 million a day? Originally, when I read this, I was confused because I thought that was the throughput, but that's the fuel usage, the, the 2.42 million cubic feet that the gas-fired engines use. And it, it yeah, the 2.42 million per uh, engine is on a 12-month rolling basis, um, and um, that uh, that number was established by the uh, owners of the equipment um, at some point uh, in the past, and it was uh, based on um, a limit a limit that uh, the district uh, and the uh, the source decided was uh, appropriate uh, at the time for for those engines uh, and, and met the regulatory requirements that were in place at the time. And we uh, in the past uh, have um, in 2005, for instance. Uh, the entire year 2005, those two compressors uh, burned 3.5 million combined, um, and their limit is 4.8 million combined. And, uh, and I'm not sure if that answers your question of uh, um, the comparison between gas produced and gas burned in the uh, compressors. But uh, well, my real question is, if they were to burn, let's say the the, the 4.8. Uh, how much of the of the annual six million a day would that have pumped? And is this a, is this a tiny fraction that's allowed to go through these two compressors of your total production? Yeah. Well, I think, uh, Mr. Chair, if we looked at uh, if, I, if I took the numbers, say for um, the the high months we had in December, we we had to use those compressors and we uh, burned. Uh, 2.7 million in December, and that uh, was used to sell or compress about uh, half a month's worth of. Um, that was used to compress about 30, 30, well, six million a day times 15, uh, so 45 million. Um, six. Um, that's not that's 90 90 million yeah. um, and and we used uh, not even three three million to compress 90 million and so okay. yeah. thank you um, one further question on, on page three the second paragraph um, the way I read this paragraph differs from the, from your account in it, it sounds based on the first sentence that, that you thought that you had the, um, the controller repaired in December, but, but your oil account seemed to be that you really never, it, it continued to, to fail all through December and, and through January up until the 28th or 29th. So this, does that mean this paragraph is not accurate, the first, first sentence over there, the first couple of sentences? Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, talking about page three, uh, paragraph two? Yes. Uh, we had um, we have to look at the records, but um, we had uh, failures, um, and we had continued to work on that controller uh, on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve days. Uh, well, basically the last two weeks of December, and it continued on into uh, January. I think um, the intent of that paragraph was that we um, we felt like by the, the effort that we had made in trying to fix that controller, that either we had um, we had a good idea that we were going to to have it fixed, and and therefore we um, we felt like the uh, we didn't need a variance. Uh, but 
uh, it continued on into January, and uh, as it turned out, we, we were not able to stay underneath the, the limit. Um, had we had it fixed, um, I guess up until uh, the 28th or 29th of January, we may have been able to uh, run those three electric compressors with number seven back online and hardly have any use at all of the Coopers, uh, as reflected in our, um, our handout. Um, but um, fortunately, we 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 didn't uh, we didn't get it fixed, and uh, I think there was a perception that maybe we thought we we, we could have it fixed um, in, in December. Would it be accurate if we replace that second sentence with a sentence that said the common control controller f failed repeatedly throughout January? Yeah, I think I should have probably, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Chair said that, yeah. It, uh, it, the, the failure continued through January 28th. So the second sentence now says the failure continued throughout, through, through January 28th, is that is that accurate? Um, I, I would actually say it probably continued through the, the 29th also and the uh, and the 30th. Through, through that, Janu January 30th, and that's when we actually fixed it on the 30th. Let's just so that the failure continued, failures continued through January 2006. That's correct. Thank you. Is that okay with the district? That's fine. In a question on the, the comparison of the, the emissions from the flare and the emissions from the engine, is the flare at your facility or is it on the platforms? Each of the platforms has their own flares. Uh, they're all located in Santa Barbara County. The flare at Rincon is obviously located in, uh, in Ventura County, and it is up at the facility. This, so the flare that's being compared in this table is your flare in, in our district? Uh, Mr. Chair, that's correct. Yeah. Does the district have any questions for the petitioner? Uh, maybe just a couple, just for clarification. Um, we just talked about the uh, the flare at the uh, Rincon facility. If that entire facility had to be shut down because the variance was not granted and you would not be allowed to flare out the facility, would that cause the platforms to have to shut down? Um, we we have uh, currently uh, limits for flaring offshore and they're based on uh, quarterly um, limits in Santa Barbara County. I believe that uh, the first, one of the first platforms would shut down in about two days. Uh, it would reach its limit for flaring if we couldn't flare it at Rincon or if we had to shut the Rincon facility down. So in, in two days, uh, we would have to shut the pla one of the first platforms in one of the higher producing platforms, and then the other platforms would, um, would, would shut down after that. I think Platform Henry, which is probably the lowest producer for gas, would, would, would be able to flare for about um, 30 days, and then it would also have to shut down. Um, but, um, but yes, uh, at, at very shortly, we, we, we've already consumed some of those flaring allowances offshore, so uh, it wouldn't probably even take two days, and we'd have to shut some of those, start shutting those facilities in offshore. What, what would it take to restart those platforms if they did shut down? Well, offshore, the platforms are, um, the oil uh, wells are all, uh, I think, they're all electrically driven pumps for the most part. So we have to shut all those pumps down. Um, when we come back online, uh, we, we tend to have to flare um, for a period of time, um, maybe several hours. And, uh, and, and then we start shipping to the beach. Uh, but uh, when we do shut platforms in for, for periods of time, uh, pumps are prone to uh, to certain downhole conditions that 
may cause uh, pump failures to start back up again, and we may have to pull pumps to get them, pull the pumps out of the wells to get them back up and running. Um, so it's not a real straightforward and, and uh, easy, uh, or um, it, it's, it's not something we'd like to do. And, and when we do have turnarounds offshore, we, we try and minimize those to uh, sort of annual annual type turnarounds. Uh, we just you know we just try everything we can to keep those pumps running to keep uh, all the systems functioning so that we don't have to uh, both flare when we go down and flare when we come back up again. Do, do you think that, uh, do you believe that operating the Cooper Bessemer compressors is the best alternative as compared to flaring onshore or offshore or shutting platforms down? Uh, yes, sir. The, uh, Coopers right now, uh, because of the condition that exists with the electrical compressors all being available for our use, we, we don't see the Coopers, Cooper compressors as, as being run uh, uh, very much at all. As a matter of fact, we have uh, previous years, we have several months where they weren't run even one hour, so there was no gas burned in them. Um, and the only thing we would do is turn them over to make sure that uh, the, the pistons and the cylinders turn over on them. Uh, periodically. Um, so t to, um, to the extent that we would cause this additional flaring uh, to occur offshore if we didn't have the electrics or that we didn't have the coopers available to us, um, to, to the extent that we would lose production uh, and, and, and revenues and that we would have some potential pump failures downhole of the wells, we, we really feel like um, we, have, um, we have our arms around the the electrical and compressor uh, reliability issues are are uh, are now behind us. We think, and we have three available compressors, and um, that that the if we do need to use a Cooper, it'll be limited to to very very short periods of time, and um, the resulting emissions from that will be extremely low compared to uh, start up and shut down flaring offshore. Uh, start up and shut down flaring at the Rincon facility, I believe. Okay. It, is it your understanding that you are currently in violation of your permit condition number two on your permit number 970? Uh, I believe permit condition number two is the, uh, the limitation on the, uh, on the Coopers. Yes. Yeah, and um, uh, description and limits on the Coopers being 242 million standard cubic feet per year per Cooper and uh, we are currently uh, if we operate the Coopers today we are in violation of the 2.42 per Cooper each uh, we haven't exceeded the hour limit but uh, unfortunately the gas the gas limit has been exceeded yes those are all the questions that I have any number, other members of the board have questions or comments for the district or the petitioner, Mr. Stubblefield? Mr. Duvall, the petitioner stated on page 5, during possible future electric compressor failures to avoid significant flaring emissions, a variance is needed to operate the Cooper Bessemer compressors in excess of their permit limits. Went on to say, gas burned by the Cooper Bessemer compressors during the term limit, the term of the variance, will not accrue against the 12-month rolling average fuel limit. Once the 12-month rolling fuel limit, fuel use limit, excuse me, compliance is regained, the Cooper Bessemer compressors can be returned to a compliant standby status. Just for the record, could you explain, if that's accu an accurate characterization, could you explain what it means well, exactly? Yeah, you know, it, it's, it's an ac accurate characterization. What, what we're trying to do is through this variance, uh, you might say forgive any use of the Cooper Bessemers between now and August, the, the fuel, against the fuel use limit, because they have to work back towards uh, getting their 12-month rolling average back down to below the 2.42 uh, million per unit. And so, in effect, what this variance would do would be to forgive any gas consumption in those compressor engines during this period of time. 
are are they going to be fined for that? Are they going to is there going to be any mitigation? Uh, or we're just going to forgive it? At, at the end, at the end of the variance period, they'll they will pay um, an excess emission fee uh, based upon how much gas they consume in the compressor engines. So it's uh, it's to their benefit to reduce the amount as much as possible. Al although that excess emission fee is not uh, a very real high number. It might be in the matter of a couple thousand dollars. So you, the district doesn't feel that it's a, a significant source, even if they do have to run it. Is that correct? That's correct. It, uh, I think economically and efficiency-wise, it's to their benefit to use the electric compressors to compress the gas. And uh, because it does take some of their resource uh, being natural gas to burn these, you know, in these two compressors. Thank you. Other comments or questions? Uh, I I have one that, that follows up a little bit on, on what Mr. Gasparino said and, and the line that uh, Mr. Stubberfield was just following. This it, it appears, uh, and he explained that there is a little bit of a disincentive for them to to run these compressors, but it. It appears that we're sort of giving them carte blanche to run these compressors for the next four months, um, and, and and depending on some fairly minor um, economic disincentives as well as as fines uh, to enforce that. It, that bothers me a little bit that there's no that there's no quantification of what's going to happen in the next four months as far as those compressors are concerned. Could you either either try to help me with that or, or explain something that might uh, might make me feel better about it? Well, um, the the word the word fine has been mentioned a couple times, and by decor filing their petition, and if this petition is granted tonight, granting them the variance, um, <clears throat> there there would be no fines assessed. Because in effect, you're, you're, I can't think of the, the, the way to phrase it, but you are giving them a variance from a violation of the rules. So there would be no, no fine or a violation during this period of time. Um, I, there, um, uh, I, I think we would just have to uh, monitor their monthly use of the compressors. Uh, they are going to be required to give us monthly reports on their use. Uh, but a as you said, there is no upper limit on uh, how much they can use the compressors. Would, would there be any reason to, to prevent the board from, from setting an upper limit, such as four months? Worth of their, you know, annual allowance or something like that would that help at all? That that would help, I think, put an upper limit on it. Yes. <clears throat> right, right. As it is now, each compressor is allowed uh, 2.42 million cubic feet per year as an emergent kind of as an emergency standby basis. So, suggestion might be if, if you're looking at some upper limit, it might be, let's say, a third of that 2.4 limit, which would be, um, you know, r roughly one third of their annual Point nine, yeah. allotment or... Um. I, I, I would feel more comfortable if we were able to quantify what it means to minimize uh, during this next four months myself. Uh, I, I, it seems as, as allowing them to, to continue at, you know, at, at a third of the annual rate kind of defeats the 12-month rolling 
but, but I'm not sure what, what to propose. Uh, any other board members have any suggestions I'd like to hear it, or if the, the district or the petitioner has any suggestions there. Uh, it, it just, uh, I, I know you, that you, you want to keep it, keep it low, but if you have a problem, uh, you're not incentivized to do that very strongly. Dr. Shackman? I think we should leave the order the way it's written. I don't think the petitioner has an incentive to run the uh, natural gas compressors. They have the electrical compressors. The electrical compressors are a preferred method of dealing with the problem. If we all feel better with some sort of fig leaf of a maximum allowance, it's, it's nothing more than that. And I, I think it just uh, creates uh, unnecessary complexity in the order. So I would prefer to leave the order as it is. Any other comments on that, Mr. Gasparino? Um, yes, I agree with Dr. Shackman. However, I would still like to see some of the examples that you gave uh, spelled out in this document. That's why I asked the question originally, uh, what is minimized all planned activities so that it's clear and not just assume that these are the things that the district would like to see minimized. That would be my only addition or comment. Thank you. Not sure how we would go about doing that. If we if we do, we probably want to try and do it here. I think uh, work work through that. I sort of agree with Dr. Shackman's you know, making this more more complex, and 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 I agree they don't they wouldn't prefer to to use the uh, the IC engines. But on the other hand, if if their electrical system goes out again, they're not motivated particularly to get it fixed because we haven't told them that they have to limit further use. That's any other board members have any comments on this? I um, have no problem with the order as written, so I think I'm, I'm in the Shackman camp at this point. Okay, I, I think the, uh, um, the, the sense of the board is, is kind of divided on this, and uh, I, I could go either way. I don't feel that strongly about it either. Okay, if, if there are no further questions by members of the, of the board, I don't see any members of the public here, so I, I think it's fair to assume there are no uh, no public comments. And I'll, I'll close the, uh, uh, the hearing portion, and the board can take this under consideration unless the district or the petitioner have anything further you'd like to add to this discussion. Not necessary. Mr. Chair, I think uh, what we've heard so far uh, is 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 uh, acceptable and appropriate for for what we uh, we came uh, here to discuss, and uh, and I just basically wanted to point out that uh, the the one sheet here entitled "IC Compressors Hours and Fuel Log Under Variance" it, it does sort of uh, uh, give you an example of how. The limited use of the compressors we've got uh, in February, we used it uh, <coughs> basically just uh, almost six hours for 76,000 uh, standard cubic feet. And then in March, we only used it one time for two hours with 35,000. So we anticipate that that trend will either stay the same, and we hope, or, or drop down to zero. We, we certainly don't want it to go the other way because we do have three compressors that we can use. Thank you. Thank you. Let's uh, call the uh, testimony portion of this uh, closed and, and uh, take it up with the board. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I move that we adopt the draft variance order with the changes on page three that uh, you made earlier. I would second that motion. 
Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion by members of the board before we take a vote? I don't. It appears not to be. So, uh, can the clerk please take the roll? Mr. Gasparina. Aye. Dr. Chapman. Aye. Ms. Weisslinger. Aye. And Mr. Stubblefield. Aye. And Mr. Gerlach. Aye. So the, the motion is carried and, and the, uh, the petition is, is granted. Mr. Chair, members of the board, thank you very much. You're welcome. Is there any district business to, to bring up in terms of future hearings? Or? We, we do have one future hearing that I think Chris Cody is going to be contacting each of you to see what your schedule is um, probably in the next three to four weeks. Um, <clears throat> so if you can take a look at your calendars when you get home. Okay. If there's nothing else, uh, this meeting is adjourned. Yeah. 6.15.